Good morning, lunatics, and welcome to Morning Java. Morning Java brought to you, as always, Hunter, by our very good friends at the Get-Go Cafe and Market, where they are taking the little fishies swimming in the sea, and they are frying them up for all of our goodness during this Lenten part of the year. It sounds so mean, man, but I'm totally into it. I love fried <laughs> fish. I try not to think about the humanity of the fish as I'm eating it, though. That's a rather vegetarian take for a guy I've seen eat a lot of meat. But uh, you, guys, you guys have seen Hunter on a couple of Javas, but he's never really taken any time to introduce himself. So he's kind of just the dude that throws up all the Steelers stuff and tweets at you and things like that. So Hunter, tell me a little bit about yourself. Well, Maddie, I like long walks on the beach. And uh, no, I, I did, I kind of came out of nowhere. I was covering mixed martial arts before this. So like UFC fighting, Conor McGregor and Ronda Rousey. Usually if people haven't heard of MMA, I go with those two and they're like, I know one of those two people. So I came out of there. Maddie and I actually went to college together. So we went to WVU together and met there at the school's newspaper. And that's kind of just where it all began, my journalism. Ha happily ever after. Yep, once again. But, love uh, brings us together. So, so you're a you're a journalist at heart. You love to be in there. You're a fan. Obviously, you've talked about that. Um, what do you do, kind of, in your time away from here? Because I think some of the people are starting to see you shredding it up a little bit <laughs> on those uh, social media posts of your own. Yeah, I mean, I, I actually on my resume, I have a section that just says hobbyist. Like, I'm very proud of the fact that I like other things that aren't work. You know, my life is not all work. And that sounds really silly, but for people in this industry, it makes sense. Like you're always on the clock. As soon as you wake up to the time you go to bed, there's a chance that you're working. You're never like punching a punch, in a punch card. Is it called a punch card? I, don't know. I, I, I never had a regular like, job. Yeah, I've never had like a, I don't know. I think one time I worked in a, in a, I was bagging groceries and I had a punch card and that's the only punch card I've ever had. After that, nice. it was like, you know, type into the computer yeah. kind of thing. You, uh, you actually shred though. Yeah, no, I've played guitar since I was like 13 years old. So I started, played in bands all through high school and stuff like that. In college, of course, it gets a little harder unless you're a famous band to keep playing, but I still make time every day to shred it up. So check my Twitter and Instagram for that. All right, Hunter, you can't just tell people that you shred. You got, you got to explain a little bit because you do shred and I cover pop punk poorly with my bass guitar. There's a really big difference between what we do. I play along to Blink-182 and Good Charlotte at times if I feel like throwing it back. But, you know, what do you do? Because when I look at your videos, it looks like you should be on stage and not working with us. <laughs> well, you're way too kind, first of all. Second of all, I can blame my dad for this because from literally, I mean, there's pictures documenting this. From the time I could walk, I was wearing the Stevie Ray Vaughan boots and cowboy hat playing a little tennis racket. Like, there, this picture exists and we'll find it and edit it into this video. But... It all started there, man. So I've literally had a love for guitar and just watching Stevie on stage, you know, his faces and just his persona, I was like, that guy is the man. Like, that's what I want to do. But then as I got older, it was like Red Hot Chili Peppers, Rage Against the Machine, and then into Metallica. And it was just a spiral down into metal. And now I love like technical death metal, just the craziest stuff that nobody should ever be listening to, really. But I love it. And I mean, Honestly, a lot of the readers on the site, I was really surprised when I started doing live questions. I get a lot of music questions, man, and I love that. So it's cool that a lot of them are into that, too. No, I noticed that. I picked up on that. And for the people who haven't seen, I mean, you can literally pick up the guitar and just shred through these licks and solos where you're just like, dude, what? Like, literally, what is this guy doing writing <laughs> about sports? But you brought up uh, Rage Against the Machine, man. I always regretted missing that like reunion show where they teamed up with Wu-Tang Clan yes. and put on shows in New York yes. and in Philadelphia. Man, if there was like one act that you could see just like reunite, dead or alive, what is it? Rage is definitely one of them. I have two, Rage for sure and Pantera with Dimebag Daryl. Of course he got shot on stage and that reunion can never happen now. So Pantera might come back with somebody else in his spot, but it'll never be the same. Yeah, you'll never see it. I want to see Johnny Cash. I mean, I wish that I could have found a way to do that. Bob Marley. Um, I'd love to see Rage. I still want to see Wu-Tang Clan. They're getting together, <laughs> dude. Wu-Tang's going on Just keep doing tour. it. You can't I, beat them. I want to go to Woodstock. You think there's going to be some, some... They haven't dropped the list yet, but... After the Fred Durst era of Woodstock, <laughs> yeah. you think they're going to recover this year? I don't know, man. I haven't paid attention to Woodstock, like you said, since that like Woodstock 99, was it? That, yeah. that, was, a, that was a crazy bill then. 
I don't know, man. You want to take a trip? Let's do it. We could take to a Woodstock. trip. Not like a, not like a Santana in the 70s. <laughs> you in mentioned 60s, Woodstock, Woodstock and trips trip. in the same sentence. No, no, not that kind of trip. But we should, <laughs> we should go to Woodstock. We should pick up like some Long John Silvers along the way. Some <laughs> get-go fish. I'd rather have get-go fish, obviously. But, you know, we'll make our way there. And, man, it'll be awesome. Let's do it. You can shred. You can show us how to shred. Yeah, man. let's take a guitar on the road. They got battery-powered amps now. We can do this. No problem. Hunter on stage with Santana. You heard it here first. <laughs> Hunter, let's just keep it rolling, man. No sports. This is a no sports job. If you guys want that, come back tomorrow or whatever. Go watch yesterday since you can do that yeah. right down here. Is there anything on a food? We talk a lot about pizza. Let's not talk so much about pizza. Is there anything on a food, like a topping-wise, that you think is overrated or something you don't like? And don't talk about ranch. Nobody wants to listen to you talk about ranch right now. Just talk about anything else. Yeah, the ranch discussion was so successful, it's probably a great idea for us to keep talking about food. Let's just let it go. Let's yeah, here, here it is. And please, don't punch me. Don't revoke my Pittsburgh card. French fries on sandwiches suck. That's a terrible decision. They make it worse. French fries, amazing. Sandwiches, amazing. French fries on sandwiches? No, it doesn't have a place. Um... If you could pull out your wallet and hand me your Yenzer card, <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll take that from you right now. I don't hate French fries on sandwiches. I don't think the Permanis sandwich is like my favorite sandwich in the world, but it is cool. It's nice to get every once in a while. Dan takes me there more than <laughs> once in a while. But I like, man, going back to WVU, and uh, I apologize, Chris Benson, in advance for this, but, man, the fat <laughs> sandwich... <laughs> At WVU, when we would get that from Sandwich U, or it went through a couple of different names, yeah, yeah. but the fat, the fat, the fat, <laughs> man, these were sandwiches that came on this hoagie roll, and they had literally everything you could imagine on For them. Real. Do you have a favorite? The fat, yeah, that, that was the best one. I mean, that's the flagship sandwich, and I kind of regret saying that french fries on a sandwich suck now because you've just completely debunked my theory here with that sandwich. But my favorite thing about those sandwiches is despite the fact that it had chicken tenders, mozzarella sticks, french fries, sauce and cheese on it, it didn't taste like any of that. It Ketchup, just, mayo, steak and cheese. It just tasted like a thing. Like yeah. you just ate it and it was like one taste. It tasted like a fat the, Very unique. The, the sandwich literally, <laughs> steak and cheese or chicken or and, and, and the cheese sticks, like you said, and all of those things, ketchup and mayo, I nix, ixnate those for some, some uh, buffalo sauce. But, man, it really did. It has its own flavor. Yeah. You took a bite of that thing, and you're like, man, that's a fat exactly. That's literally the exactly. only thing exactly. that you can describe it as. There is no other way to describe it. No. And, unfortunately, I don't think they exist in Morgantown. Either. Seriously. Yeah. Man, I haven't been back to Morgantown in years. That's disappointing. This, this place, though, guys, this is the place that you could eat at once a year. Hard roll. Hard and fast. If you ate more than one of these a year, you would, like, on the floor. You're done. That's it. Lights out. And I, I think that's it for this job because I think Vincent's already going to have his hands full.